Hello everyone, Eric Marks here again with FindingMiddleEarth.com and I'm finally back. Uh, first, I just want to say that I hope all of you had a fantastic Christmas and New Year holiday with your friends and family. Um, <coughs> uh, sorry about that, I'm still trying to get over a uh, sickness. So anyway, what I was trying to say was I hope you all had a fantastic holiday. Um, I'm so sorry that I haven't been making videos. Uh, I have been pretty sick for about three weeks. So uh, I want to keep this short, uh, but I, want, I do want to let you know why I haven't been making videos. So uh, it started out as basically a, a, a bad cold and then it got a little worse. And then I found out that it turned into bronchitis. And basically we were doing everything we could to stop the chest infection before it turned into pneumonia and things started getting dangerous. So uh, long story short, I am finally getting better. My cough has gone away for the most part. Uh, so I'll have a few little cough attacks here and there, but my, my whole chest and esophagus area is just really sore. So I'm just trying to, to keep the talking to a minimum and um, haven't been able to record a lot of videos. Anyway, so I, I, I kept seeing all these, you know, YouTubers do their whole like, you know, the end of the year, 2018 year in review, like, you know, hashtag new year, new me kind of thing. Uh, so I didn't really do one of those. Number one, I was sick in bed. And number two, I certainly really like those kind of things that everybody does. So I just want to tell you all, uh, just a simple thank you for uh, a fantastic 2018 and uh, I know you're going to give me a fantastic 2019 as well and I really do just appreciate uh, every single one of you that support me and uh, love watching my channel. I, I love you just as much. So today let's talk about printing. All right, so here we are on the opposite end of my office now from where I normally do my filming. Uh, you guys probably don't get to see this area too much. This is my uh, printing workstation. Uh, this is my big Epson printer over here, and my uh, precision uh, paper trimmer, and my self-healing cutting mat, and so I do all my paper cutting and sign my prints and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's a nice big workspace. I actually might do more filming here. It's nice to have the table to lean back on and super chill and casual. I like it. I might do more. Um, okay, so printing. If you want to get into printing at home, I just simply want to make you aware of a few things that aren't out there uh, as general information a lot of times. Um, and this is not to deter you from printing at home at all, because I absolutely love printing at home. It's just to make you aware of a few things, uh, because I know a few people, including a few viewers who have reached out to me, uh, that didn't know these few things before they got into this. So first off, uh, is printing at home cheaper than outsourcing to a lab? Uh, if you're not selling prints, no. <laughs> if you just want to print your own stuff and you think one day like, hey, I want to, you know, I want to start printing my own stuff. So I'm going to get like a really nice photo printer, make the investment. I'm going to print my own eight by tens, five by sevens, whatever. Just outsource that at a local lab, and it's going to be way cheaper. Especially if you print a lot, because the inks in these printers are very expensive to replace. So if you're selling prints, that's fine because that offsets the cost, uh, depending on how many you sell. But there, there's a few things I want to make you aware of. So there are really two big things. Uh, but before we get into that, I know everybody's wondering, is going to ask in the comments, I'm sure, what printer am I using? Um, I always use Epson printers, so it doesn't really matter the model, but I always recommend Epson. So 100% uh, I would go with Epson if you're asking me. Uh, I'm not sponsored or paid by them or anything. I just, I love Epson printers. Um, I've used pretty much all Epson printers my entire life, with the exception of one Canon printer that I got a few years ago on one of their crazy rebates. It made it like 50 bucks, so why not? Now, paper is just as important as the printer. Um, the paper is kind of like matching up a lens to your camera, right? It's, it, you can have a, a $9 million camera, but if you put a crappy piece of glass in front of that sensor, there's no point in getting that kind of camera. Well, it's the same kind of thing. If you don't, if you don't use good paper, there's no point in putting, you know, amazing inks and running it through an amazing printer. Uh, you got to get really good paper and figure out what your style of paper is. That's kind of a style too. You know, if you like the really texturized paper or real smooth metallic, glossy, all that stuff. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about some of my favorite paper and yes, we're going to make a print in this video, I promise. Uh, but I do want to talk about a few things. So first thing is the ink. Okay. Something of this caliber, a printer of this caliber, which is a 17 inch printer. They print 17 inches wide by pretty much however long you want. That's my biggest selling point with the Epson printers that a lot of other brands can't do is that the Epson printers offer a roll adapter for the back. So you can actually feed a roll, a big roll of paper through it. So you can print like five, six feet long, uh, big panoramas um, right at home, which is awesome. So anyway, uh, first thing is the ink. So this ink is expensive, uh, but not that bad, especially if you're selling prints. So 
If you think, hey, I'm gonna go pick up, some, pick up an Epson P800 like this, do some amazing, you know, 17 by 22 big prints at home, 16 by 20 is whatever, all those you can do on this printer. Um, by the time you print, I don't know, maybe 40 of those, you're gonna start seeing the ink get pretty low, depending on obviously if you're printing color or black and white or whatever. And you're not gonna like the prices of having to replace the inks for just using this as a home hobbyist photo printer. Uh, it costs about $540. Uh, US dollars to replace the inks, the entire ink cartridge system in this printer. Uh, and they're, so that's pretty expensive, right? It's not your regular just home photo printer that can print text and documents and, and you know, 50 bucks to replace all the cartridges kind of a thing. This is a serious printer. So that, that's the big thing is thinking about the cost of the ink. So it's definitely not cheaper to print at home if you're not making money from it. Or if you're just a multimillionaire, it doesn't matter, go buy this and turn off the video and you're fine. Um, but the second biggest, the second thing, which is really the biggest thing, which is um, when you get into this caliber of printer and you do it at home, you're basically entering another marriage. If you're already married, uh, you gotta make room. There's, there's another marriage in the house that's happening. This is like a, a serious commitment. You have to devote time and attention to it. You cannot let this sit. So what I mean by that is because there is such a complex system internally under the hood and all these nozzles are spitting out these pigment inks, these beautiful inks, you don't want to waste the ink and you don't want to let those nozzles clog. So what that means is you have to make a print about every two days to keep this thing in good lubricated working order. And if you don't make a print every two days and you let the nozzles clog, then one of two things is going to happen. Number one, if you leave it for too long, it could clog so bad that it won't work. You're going to have to take it into some place that fixes printers and it might not ever work again, depending on how long you let it sit. I'm talking if you let it sit like a year. Um, but if you let it sit a few weeks, it's going to have to do a cleaning cycle. And the clean... <coughs> ah, sorry, I still have a cough that has not fully gone away. Um, anyway, what I was saying was the printer um, does a, will do a cleaning cycle if you let the nozzles clog. And that's not good because what the cleaning cycle does is it funnels ink through the nozzles. It, it, it lubricates the system. But it doesn't run that ink on paper. It just runs it to the system, which means essentially you're just wasting ink. Uh, you're letting the, the printer waste that beautiful, expensive pigment ink that you paid so much for. And you don't want to do that because if you print at home, if you've been printing at home for years and years like I have, ink is as precious as gold. You don't want a drop of that to go to waste because when you sell prints, it helps pay for that ink. But if you don't, if, if there's a lull period and you don't sell prints for a while, you still have to make the prints because you don't want to let those nozzles clog. But if you're making the prints, you're still technically wasting inks or you could just take those prints and frame them and get them all ready to go and, until they're ready for sale. Basically, I mean, you can just pre-prep the prints that you're selling, but still you have to do something with that ink. So I would much rather print with the ink instead of waste it on nozzle cleanings. Now here's another thing, another layer uh, under that. You might say, okay, well, I'm okay with that. I'll just, I'll just let the nozzles clog once a week and I'll just deal with that. Well, here's the issue. If you let the nozzles clog too many times, you're ruining the longevity of this expensive printer that you've invested in. And then one day it might not work. It might not come back from the dead of these clogged nozzles and that has nothing to do with the brand of the printer. It just has to do with you not taking care of it. So just think about those two big things. The ink's expensive and you don't wanna waste the ink and you don't want to ruin the printer. So printers like this, simply put, they're made to be used and you need to use them about every two days. Every day would be even better, but about every two days is good. It keeps everything uh, lubricated and happy inside, uh, and it, it does not let anything clog, which is the worst thing you can have happen to your home printer, because those cleaning cycles are torture. You have to wait like, I don't know, two minutes, two to three minutes of just let, hearing that ink go through your system before it ever hits paper. Uh, it has happened to me before while I've been on vacation, uh, but what's great about the Epson printers is now when I go out of town on shoots or on vacation or anything, I can actually schedule uh, the Epson software to print a print every two days. I can schedule it. So there are ways around that. If you travel a lot, you can actually have your computer and your printer do everything while you're gone, and it'll just keep spitting out just little eight. But yeah, and by the way, you don't have to print, you know, 20 inch wide prints, or, or sorry, 17 inch or whatever. You can print the late by tens, five by sevens. You just have to print something so that it keeps the ink going through the nozzle. So I should have said that earlier because you're probably thinking, great, what am I gonna do with all these huge prints around my house? Uh, you can print just little ones. So it's just for the sake of keeping everything working and keeping the ink running through the system. So anyway, that's that. Uh, let's quickly talk about some of my favorite paper and then we'll make the print and I'll show you the result. All right, here is one of my absolute favorite papers of all time. 
Uh, the brand name of this paper is called Canson Infinity. Uh, I have no affiliation with the company. Yet again, everything mentioned in this video, uh, I have not been paid to say or not sponsored and all that stuff. Uh, however, I will put links because um, I am a B&H affiliate. So I will put links down for the printer and everything that I've talked about in the video in case you're interested. And again, B&H doesn't like sponsor me or anything. The only way I get paid is by you if you click the link and buy the thing. So it's not getting paid by anybody but you. Um, Okay, so the Canson Infinity paper. This is my favorite paper. This is specifically their Platine Fiber Rag. And the reason why I love the Platine Fiber Rag so much is the way that it handles color, the way that it handles contrast. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, every paper handles color, contrast, blacks, whites, shadows, highlights very differently. So this specific paper holds blacks really good. It makes them really rich and deep. And so any photo that I have on my computer that's a super high contrast and I really want to you know, dig into those blacks and really play on that richness of the shadows, I always use the platine fiber. But if I want to do something that's more uh, very happy and airy and bright tone, has a lot of blues and pinks and not a whole lot of contrast, you know, I'll do something like a metallic paper or uh, something just like a regular luster, just something super, you know, simple and uh, not so specialized as this, but this is just a beautiful paper. And the reason why I don't do every print on this is uh, number one, because of how uh, how, how it reacts to color and contrast. I, it's, it's made for specific photos, but also these papers are expensive. This was a uh, $120 for 25 sheets of this stuff. Uh, it's like 160 for this Epson paper back here. And I have Epson and Hanamule paper over here. So the paper is also expensive. I probably should have mentioned that when I was talking about the, the uh, home printing stuff, uh, but it's, it's an expensive hobby. But if you sell the prints and if it makes you happy, it's, it's very fulfilling, then, uh, I am excited to see you get into it. It's very awesome. Let me know if you have any questions at all about it, by the way. Uh, I've been printing and messing up and failing and learning from my mistakes for quite a few years now. So anyway, uh, that's my, some of my favorite paper. Canson Infinity has a whole list of papers uh, on their website. Another one of my favorite is the uh, Canson Infinity Burrito paper. It's very nice, uh, which Hanna Mule has a nice burrito paper too. Anyway, this is beautiful fine art paper. It's archival. Uh, it's just, it's the good stuff. So anyway, we're gonna use, we're gonna open up this paper, this Canson paper. We're gonna feed a sheet through this and we're gonna make a print. So let's go ahead and get into that. Looks like we are done here with the print. <laughs> wow, just unbelievable, unbelievable. So this is, uh, again, the importance of choosing the right paper. I always let the, uh, the digital photograph dictate what paper I'm gonna use. And you can see how high contrast of a scene this was. It was really bright up here in the autumn colors, got gradually darker. You have super deep shadows in the rocks and the bright whites of the water. Uh, the contrast is beautiful and this paper really holds the blacks well. It, it gives a nice rich contrast, beautifully renders the shadows. Um, so sharp and just so much detail. And it's a nice thick, heavyweighted paper. It has just an ever so slight texture to it. You probably won't be able to see on video camera, but the platine fiber uh, rag paper is just, just unbelievable. Uh, it's, I mean, it's museum quality, it's archival, it's, uh, you can't ask for better the way it renders everything. So I don't know if you can, I don't know if the camera is going to focus on this, but here is a semi close up for you. Um, and then you can see it here as well. Pretty good. But there you go. It's a pretty solid image. I really like this. Um, a lot of people I'm sure are going to ask me why I left so much room down here on the bottom. Uh, the main reason is because I like to just, uh, only be only cut one side of the print. So I just center everything to the top. So I have my borders even on the top and the edges. That way I only have to cut excess paper off of one side. Um, and I'm still going to leave about a, a half an inch more on the bottom because the person that ordered this print wants me to sign the front. Um, not everybody wants that. Some people want uh, borderless and they'd prefer me to just sign the back, which I can do that as well. 
Um, so yeah, there you go. Any questions at all, please leave them in the comments. I'm really glad we got to have a chat about printing because it is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, if you do want to learn more about printing and you want to see more like in-depth detail stuff, uh, hang around on the channel for the next few days. Uh, I'm finally about to launch my monthly photography training. It's going to be through a, a Patreon account. Um, so I'm going to be doing a whole, my, my whole first set of videos is going to be on uh, printing. I'm going to go into detail on color management, calibration, ICC profiles. We're going to make uh, quite a few prints together and I'm going to try to make it a very, very affordable, uh, just like a, just a one monthly cost. I'm not going to do a bunch of tier brackets and have like, you know, the people that pay $300 a month get this stuff and the $5 is just going to be one cheap price and everybody gets everything. So anyway, I'm going to be doing a lot of printing on that and I'll let you know here on the channel when I launch that. But there's the paper again, uh, could not recommend Epson printers more. If you're getting into printing, highly recommend Epson. They're the way to go. Uh, without a doubt. The, the quality is just brilliant every time. I've never had an Epson printer give me a problem or die on me or anything. Uh, you just got to take care of them and you got to put in the time because again, it is like a marriage. So there you go. There's the print. Hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's and all that. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.